Hi, in this video, I'm looking at how to calculate certain trig ratios without a calculator and focusing on the angle. So what I'm meaning is if, what if I wanted to work out, say, cos of 45 degrees, the cosine of 45 degrees, and I didn't want to use my calculator. To do this, we can use a few, well, two triangles, that can help us work out the answers to these trig ratios. So the first triangle, it starts off to generate it, draw a square that has side lengths of one. So I've got a square, which means that I know that each of my corners is a right angle and all of my side lengths are now one. And then if I get this square and I split it in half diagonally. I now, if I look at just this right angle triangle here, have a right angle triangle, an isosceles right angle triangle with uh, sides of one. And because I've split the rectangle in other uh, square in half diagonally, it splits those angles in half as well. So they were 90 and now they're 45 degrees. So these angles in here are 45 degrees. So if I just draw that one triangle out, so it's not on top of my square, I have a right angle triangle with the other two angles inside being 45 degrees because it's an isosceles right angle triangle with side length, short side lengths of one. Then all I need to do is figure out the length of my hypotenuse. Now we have Pythagoras' theorem, which says that c squared, the hypotenuse, is one of the short side squareds plus the other short side squared. So I can put my one squared plus one squared in, which means we have that c squared equals two, which means our hypotenuse has the length root two. And we leave it as root two. We don't work it out as a decimal because the benefit of doing this is we also get perfect answers, accurate answers. So now I have this right angle triangle. So if I go and look at, say, the tangent, tan of 45 degrees, I can use the fact that I know that tan theta is opposite over adjacent as a trig ratio. So if I go to one of my 45 degrees on my triangle, and I look at the opposite side to that, it is one over my adjacent side to that 45 degrees is also one. So that means that 10 of 45 degrees is one. So now we know how to do that one. Let's have a look at say the cosine of 45 degrees, the one we started off with. Now we know that cos of an angle as a trig ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I look at the adjacent side to my 45 degrees, it's a side length of one over our hypotenuse, which we worked out to be that root two. So the cosine is one over root two. Now we don't usually in maths like having a third on the bottom, so we'll rationalize this. So we'll multiply top and bottom by root two on root two. And so that will give us one times root two is root two on the numerator. And root two times root two is root two squared. And so the square and the square root will eliminate each other or cancel each other out. And we just get left with two. So the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of two on two. And finally, having a look at sine theta, if we have a look at sine of 45 degrees, well, sine we know has the trig ratio opposite side over the hypotenuse side. So again, going to one of my 45 degrees, my opposite side is one over our hypotenuse of root two. And if I do the same thing I did to the cos of 45 degrees to my sine of 45 degrees, we will have again root two 
over 2. So what I've just shown you is how we can use this simple triangle to calculate the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of 45 degrees by having the 1, 1, root 2, 45 degree right angle triangle. Now I said we can use two triangles to help us. So this triangle gets us for 45 degrees. If we move down and get some more space and have a look at drawing a different triangle. So if I start off with an equilateral triangle, so I've got an equilateral triangle. I'm going to make every side length be two. So I'm not going to start off with side lengths of one. I'm going to start off side lengths of two. So I know in an equilateral triangle, every angle is the same. And because the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, that means that they all must be 60 degrees. And if I split this triangle in half, through one of the corners, getting a vertical bisector, which or perpendicular bisector. So split it right down the middle here. And so that'll give me a right angle because I've made sure that it's a perpendicular vertical bisector. It will also split this baseline in half because it bisects it. So that'll give us a side length of one on this green triangle I'm starting to draw here. And it'll also split this 60 degrees in half here, giving us a 30 degrees up in the corner here. So if I draw out this right angle triangle separately, I've got one here, I've got a right angle here, I've got 30 degrees up in this top corner, 60 degrees in this bottom corner, and a side length of two over on my hypotenuse. And so now I just need to find out this side, and again using Pythagoras' theorem that c squared equals a squared, whoops, plus b squared. Well, my hypotenuse is 2, so I've got 2 squared equals one of my short side squareds plus the other one, which we don't know, squared. And so if I start working this out, this is going to be 4 minus 1 equals b squared. So b will be the square root of 3. So this side here is the square root of 3. And so this triangle gives me two possible angles, 30 degrees and 60 degrees. So if we start off having a look at, say, 30 degrees, I can start off with the tan of 30 degrees. So if I look at this 30 degree angle, tan is opposite, which is 1, over the adjacent, which is root 3. So my opposite side to my 30 degrees was 1, and my adjacent side was root 3. So that means that I've got 1 over root 3, but again, we don't like having the third on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply by root 3 on root 3, which is going to be 1 times root 3 is root 3, over root 3 times root 3, which is root 3 squared, is just going to be 3. So 10 of 30 degrees is root 3 on 3. And we can do the same if I look at the cosine of 30 degrees. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent side to that 30 degrees is root 3. And my hypotenuse side is 2. So we can have over 2. And also doing it for sine of 30 degrees. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side to the 30 degrees is 1 over our hypotenuse of 2. So now I've got 10 of 30 degrees is root 3 on 3. Cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 on 2. And sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Doing the same for the 60 degrees now we can have a look at 10 of 60 degrees. Well, I now look at the 60 degree angle in my triangle and I go, okay, opposite over hypotenuse. My opposite side now here is root three and my adjacent side, sorry, opposite over adjacent for tangent. My adjacent side is one. 
So I have root 3 over 1, which, because we're just dividing by 1, we have root 3. And looking at the cosine of 60 degrees, see our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So looking at the 60 degrees, the adjacent side is 1 over the hypotenuse of our triangle, 2. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. And sine of 60 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we have root 3 as our opposite. Whoops, root 3, not root 2. And we have a hypotenuse of 2. So there we have it. By constructing these two triangles, the 30, 60, 1, 2, root 3 triangle, and the 1, 1, 45, root 2 triangle, whichever way you want to think about it, we can get, without using a calculator, the exact values for tangent, cosine, and sine of 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and 60 degrees. Now, some people write this out into a table and they try to memorize the table and so that they get all of these memorized in their head. That might work for you, but uh, if you cannot remember any of these values, knowing how to construct these triangles or remembering at least the triangles can help you work these out. You can also use this now to do any multiple of these, so any integer multiple of these. So if I have, say, 135 degrees, I can work that out because that's just so many multiples of the 45 degrees. And in a future video, I will show you how to do that.